Welcome to the fourth um, lecture of the SAT Salons of this year. I would like to start this evening by reflecting on some figures and estimations. Here in Brussels, yearly, thousands of people face a judicial deportation request. Figures of illegal evictions are inexistent, while they tend to take place even more frequently. In 2018, an estimated 12,070 tenants in Flanders were at risk of being evicted from their homes. This means about 232 people were evicted each week, mainly for not being able to pay their rent. The lack of official statistics adds to the invisibility of the problem. This, while obviously it has very far-reaching consequences, often increasing already existing economic and psychological problems related to situations of poverty and judicial uncertainty. Giving visibility to the problem, denouncing framing evictions as an individual problem, instead showing this is something that concerns everyone, that even affects large uh, shares of the populations. Well, this is exactly what the Plataforma de Afectadas por la Hipoteca intended and succeeded to do. In the context of the foreclosure crisis in Spain, the platform created a massive support system with legal, political and media actions. Today, this support system has 250 nodes distributed throughout Spain. It gives visibility to the evictions, but also to the public policies and the dubious roles of financial institutions and political elites behind it. In 2013, the platform was awarded with the European Citizens Prize. This recognition by the European Parliament in 2013 added even more to its visibility. It's therefore with great pleasure and honor I introduce our speaker of today, who has been a long-standing member of the platform and will tell you all about it. So please welcome Santi Mas Shashas Faust. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was, thank you for, for the invitation and the opportunity to, to speak uh, on behalf of, of PA, which is a platform of people affected by mortgages. Uh, I was quite happy to see the, the crowd, uh, people with notebooks, that not happen too often when, when we go speaking to places. And then they told me that you need to do a paper and uh, many of you are just here because of that. <laughs> but you are with a beer and in a nice uh, environment, so I think it's a, it's a good idea from, from the organizers to, to, to place you in, in this environment. So how many of you have not chosen yet? What are you going to write about? OK, there we go. So I have been told my objective here is that you decide to write about uh, PA, and, and if you do, that will mean that this is, has been worth it, uh, and you have not wasted that much of your time. Anyway, uh, what we are going to try to do is, the well, housing is a very transversal matter, and what we do, it also goes from, from stopping evictions to trying to change laws, and I'm going to quickly talk a little bit about everything, but uh, so we have time at the end for you to make questions, and then through your questions, we will be focusing on whatever you guys decide that is more relevant. Okay, so I'm not gonna try to, because if not, this is gonna be too deep, too, too boring, so it's better than you decide what we talk afterwards. Okay, so yes, yeah, you, you, they were saying we are gonna be talking about uh, housing, about social movements, and especially how can collective action can uh, help us fight for the right to housing? So first we need to, lead, uh, to understand a little bit of how uh, in Spain, which obviously we talk about Spain because that's where we are, but uh, it can easily be translated to many other countries. Not in particular the depth of the, of the situation, the housing situation in Spain, because it's way worse than many other countries in Europe especially, but at least uh, it is, housing is a problem uh, almost everywhere in the world. So. As, as you know, we, were, we come from a dictatorship. Uh, in the 50s, 60s, the, the, the idea that was sent to everyone is that uh, if you want to be a success person, if you want to be successful, you need to buy and you need to be a owner. Uh, 
you need to stop being a proletarian and only work. Uh, if you rent, it's because you are not uh, succeeded in, in life. And tenants is just uh, as a residual uh, option. So buy a house, it will never decrease its value. It's the best investment you can do. This is the safety for your families. And if you don't do that, you regret to do that, you neglect to do that, there is something wrong with you. And it's not only that, but we are going to help you do that. So we are going to give you tax breaks. We are going to give you very cheap money for you to access to all these loans. Uh, obviously, if you look at from a society point of view, the more debt you have, the more you are going to have to work to pay that debt, the more, the less time you're going to have to think uh, about other things, the less time you will have to fight for your rights, to mobilize, to organize, you will be focusing working one, two, or three works. It's interesting how now it's the working situation, at least in Spain, is very similar. You need two jobs to get to the end of the, of your, of your, of the month because you have very cheap labor, so the situation has changed, but the objective at the end is making sure you have to work a lot at a very precarious way, so you only focus on, on, on pain and, and make sure you're a good citizen. So obviously, uh, it's not just because of we tell you, but we are gonna pass laws and we are gonna make sure that we, we the, uh, the legislation force you or drives you to do that. So there were many, many laws that we are gonna, not gonna enter, but just for you to know in Spain, if you cannot pay your mortgage, uh, you cannot just return the house and, uh, as, as a collateral. They take your house, but they, they will come to you and say, oh, I'm sorry, now your house by law it's only value 70% of what it was before. Uh, begin, before it was 60. So you still owe me 30%, 40% of your, of your house. So that's the way you are here in Spain. If you wanna get your mortgage, those are the conditions. Well, this law has been declared eight times illegal by the European Court of Justice. Eight times, it should have been only one, no? It should be, okay, it's only one. Why do we need eight? Because the government keep changing it in a way the, the court had to keep saying, keeps being illegal. So this is, this is, this is the country, these are the politicians, this is the, the, the model that we have given each other. No? It's not just that I'm telling you that this is not illegal, but I'm gonna try to keep it that way because of course there are so many interests behind that, that, that I have to respond to. Uh, another drama which I was asking here in, in Belgium, you are not even either in the front row, but you are a little bit better than us. We, are only, we only have a 2% of public housing, 2%. Uh, I think I was told here you have between five, seven, in, in Brussels a little bit more, but obviously all the people that are being evicted in Spain, they literally do not have a place to go. They literally go on the streets because the government has decided that it was not worth it to build public housing or they did buy public housing, but they told you, I'm gonna sell it to you. So you get your mortgage, which is what I want to keep you debt. And I, you as an individual, I'm gonna give you this house below my car price, but me as a government, we don't any longer have the, the house. We are privatizing uh, all the public housing that we were building. So, and obviously uh, we have not been investing in, in public policy, in housing policies. So all together, creates a, a very clear that this is not just something that has happened. Oh, now look all these crazy people in Spain that they have started buying houses. No, it happens because of a reason. And well, this is just some figures about Spain inequality and employment rate is up to date. Uh, in 2013 was almost 27 percent. We're now still at 14 percent. And most of you, and if you are women in Spain, 30 percent of you will be unemployed. 30% of the population uh, below 50, be 25 years, uh, 25 years old are unemployed in my country, as sad as it, that looks. And obviously inequality, uh, but hey, we may not have money for you to promote your uh, safety work, uh, but we do have money to bail out banks. For that, we did not have any problem, 77,000 million 77,000 million euros. That's the money that we gave for free. Nothing asking exchange. No, no a participation of your bank, nor a part of your assets. No, that you return me the, the money now that you are making 3,000 million euros a year. None of that. We just gave you for free because you're a bank and no, if, I don't know if you have a business, but this business will never receive a loan without having to return it. 
the banks did. And this is the money that the European Union is putting in the next generation funds that Spain is gonna receive for free. It's exactly 70,000 million. That's what we gave the banks in 2008. With this money, now they say that we're gonna change Spain completely. Imagine, we could have changed Spain completely eight years ago if we decided not to bail out banks. So all that together brought more than a million evictions in Spain. I was reading also today, I think you, you had, at, the, at least in the papers, around 600 uh, evictions last year. Uh, only last year, we have 20,000 and nor because of the pandemic and there is a moratorium. So normally we have on a, a, a regular year, we have between 60,000, 70,000 uh, evictions of people that are throwing on the streets with no alternative housing. This is the scope of the, of the situation. So those are just some um, pictures of how evictions take place in Spain. It's not that they just knock on your door and generally ask you to move. You have the police on your door. Obviously, no time to remove your, your belongings. As many police as is needed. The important is that the bank can keep and can re regain possession of, on a, of an asset that was never theirs. And no matter if you are a young children, older people, if you are sick, they don't care. There's, we have evictions right now uh, with COVID. People with COVID, no worries. We are gonna kick you out. If necessary, we will take you to the emergency unit, but you are not gonna stay in this place. So in this context, in 2009, uh, PA was born. And who are these crazy people that decided to say that this was not okay and that we had to, to fight? We are just a grassroots organization, just uh, common people from the streets, no kind of, uh, any kind of political association, no experience, uh, that we decided that obviously we were, gonna, we, we were gonna denounce the mortgage crisis, but right now, 12 years, uh, 13 years after almost, uh, we, we work for the right to housing. That means that we have many people that cannot pay the rent, many people that have been forced to, to squat, to occupy, because they don't have anywhere else to go. So right now we are not just focusing on, 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 on housing, on mortgages, sorry. So we are free of charge, non-partition uh, social movement. And uh, at the end of the day, we are just civil society fighting for a basic human right, which is the right to housing. Uh, as we were saying, the, we are non partisans and that means that we don't have no NGO, no foundation, no trade union, no one who is supporting us. Uh, we do not charge anything to anyone. We are assembly, which means we are a horizontal uh, movement. No, they don't look for a, for a president, for a board, for a manager. There is nothing, none of that. So I cannot be presented at other thing as a member of uh, the organization I'm proudly part of. And we do collective advice. That means that when you come to our assemblies, we are not gonna tell you what uh, to do. We are not gonna take your case and make you sit down here and tell, like if we are social services or if we are lawyers and no, no, you are gonna be in a space where your people are gonna share their knowledge. You are gonna find tools to start fighting for your own uh, uh, cause and, and that's how we do things, okay? We do civil disobedience uh, and we do it in a pacific and, and non-violent uh, direct action. We are obviously open to any kind of race, we no, no kind of discrimination, of course, but also from a political point of view, we don't ask you who do you support or who do you vote for, we don't care. Here is a space where uh, you need to be, feel included, and as long as you have a problem, a housing problem, or you are someone who want, wants to fight for the right to housing, uh, you are more than welcome at our assembly. And obviously, uh, PA will not be what it is, it will not be a, a feminist movement. So I'm sorry I'm, I'm the one talking today, but I'm talking on behalf of many, many, many women that are the ones that are really leading our organization, because at the end of the day, when problems appear, men disappear, and women are the ones that are fighting for them to try to solve them. Uh, so it, it is what it is. So it's, we can joke about it, we can make, a, it's not that bad, come to our assemblies, you will see the amount of women that are fighting and the amount of men that are also there. So obviously when problems start, the fathers disappear and the mother has to try to find a place, a decent place for, but not only that, but because of that, well, we, 
there is not much of a fight of egos. Uh, we like to take acknowledge of and recognition of the work of others. We like to work in a collaborative way. Uh, we like to to we have way more empathy, empathy, and we work on that. So being a feminist group that also explains why we do the things the way we do. Um, so how you organize an assembly? Because an assembly movement, I don't know how strong do you feel about assemblies here. Some people may think that this is completely useless, takes a lot of time to make, take decisions, there is no way that anything can be done through assemblies. Well, uh, we have proven that that's not it has, uh, the case. So obviously, you need to boost horizontality. Uh, everybody has to control their egos. Everybody has to know the role they place in the in the movement. Decisions have to be taken in those spaces. Uh, you cannot just start talking on behalf of the movement without uh, being consulting the movement. This presentation has been shared with my colleagues uh, previously. This last update they haven't, but the one the, the previous one they have. So it is all uh, shared and and work together. Uh, this opens the door to the collective intelligence. It's incredible, unbelievable uh, how much one can add to someone else's else opinion, how an idea grows with the inputs of other people. And, and you can, may come to a place thinking, uh, this is what it needs to be done. I know this is what you, we should be doing in this, in this matter in specific. And we just start listening to other people or somebody said something you never thought about it. And the more random people is not the more experienced or is not the one that knows more about this uh, specific topic. Maybe somebody else says something uh, and that through that idea, we start talking about a different thing than we started. And the outcome is way much better. So this is key. Another thing is you need to be to, to, you need to adapt. In Nepal, we said we try. If it fails, we, if it doesn't work, we we change. Uh, we try. We review if it's working, and if it's not working, we change. As is collaborative, as is assembly, no one really can take credit of ah that was my idea, so I'm gonna fight it until the end because if not, it seems like I'm uh, they are going against me. Because at the end of the day, it's very hard to know whose idea was what and why are we doing the things we did. Is because we thought we decided at one point and to do things that way. So now we are reviewing that, and if it's not working, uh, we do it in a different way. That's why we started doing mortgages, and the reality came to, come, came to our assembly. All the southern people with problems with paying the rents, all of the southern people problems with, with the, because they were squatting. So we adapt to to what we what it comes. And I think it's important that money sucks. Money is great for some things, but money sucks for many others. And in a movement, money sucks. If you don't have money, there is not much fights about what we do with the money, or how do we look for money, who is going to be, how do we give uh, accounting to somebody who is giving money to us. So uh, we have proven that we can organize ourselves without money. We do parties, we sell t-shirts, uh, we sell uh, books, and, and that's pretty much what they, what they do. Some individuals donate. 20 euros, 30 euros, we don't have uh, anyone, we will not be accepting a donation from our organization constantly. So we can organize without money. And finally, through all that, you build a sense of, of community, okay? So more in particular, uh, we are working at uh, three levels, a local level, national level, and a state level, okay? If you wanna know more about how we organize then ask afterwards if you think. But we have commissions, one more focus on, on, on communication, another to stop evictions, a legal one, uh, an international one, which that's one of the reasons I'm here, uh, the ones that do the welcome assembly. So there are many kinds of uh, groups that are working in an independent way, but obviously they all have to refer to the assemblies and uh, they get their mandates through the, the, the coordination assembly where we all together decide where we, what we do. And we use all kind of uh, tools, uh, Telegram, uh, but what I'm gonna tell you, you are all millennials here, so you have way more tools that, uh, that we had. But it is true that as, as they have been coming up, so we are starting to use them. So Telegram, we, we communicate through Telegram. We use something called Mumble in order to, instead of having a Skype, we, we, it's like a walkie-talkie and I, we can be talking to someone in, in Murcia or Andalusia or in other places of Spain in a very quick and, and, and sharing way. So it, those are also uh, tools and have helped us to be horizontal and to be assembly and to be nationally, national uh, broad, but without having to physically meet. 
Uh, we did from we did grow from one to 2020 or 2050 uh, because uh, you just have to have a group of people interested on following our guidelines, which the ones we said before: non-participation, free of charge, uh, assembly, and all that. And if you decide to work that way, then you can start your own path. You will have a path that will foster you for a few months. Once we know that you work that way, you are on your own. That's it. And you just need a place to meet, and and that way you can easily. So we could easily export the movement. But it is true that uh, this will not have happened. We would have not grown without the, the 15M and the movement of the indignados, where we found all crazy people also meeting in squares, uh, thinking that not only housing, but many other uh, areas uh, needed a change from a political point of view, from a media point of view, from an educational point of view. So we all met on the, in the squares, and there, the, a lot of people learn about PA, and some of them, when they went back to their to their towns or cities or neighborhoods, they decided also to start a, a PA over there. So uh, I'm gonna play a video now. It's eight minutes video, but uh, I hope you like it. Uh, but precisely, we wanna play that one because you will not, you cannot understand uh, PA, or you can, or you can understand PA once you watch this video, because everything at PA starts at the welcome assembly. Okay, we call it welcome assembly. It's the assemblies where we met, when we meet. There, people arrive for the first time um, with their problem, feeling guilty, feeling ashamed, thinking that they have done something wrong. That's what society told me. No, how can you cannot pay your mortgage? What are you doing, man? You you have to provide. It's it's there is something wrong with you. Uh, and when they get there, they find out, well, other things that I think is much better that uh, instead of me talking, uh, you get to, to watch. But it, at the end of the day, is about these, these concepts, no? overcoming barriers, be caring, get involved in a different spaces, create a warm, uh, warm env environment, thinking that you are not alone any longer, that you are, gonna, you are part of a community, and that you are empowered, and that if we fight together, you are not gonna be evicted from your, from your house. Okay, or if not, a different solution will be found for you. So now we are this tech part where I start talk, touching things and hopefully that will not work. Al comienzo, pues lo primero que es arreglar el local. Poner las sillas en orden, todo para que cuando la gente venga esté todo adecuadamente, ¿no? Para ser una buena recibida. Les pregunto, ¿no? Si es por primera vez que vienen, pues se le han llevado a un buen sitio, con una sonrisa, ya, con, este, con amabilidad y el respeto. Porque estas personas vienen sufriendo, vienen con un grave problema que van a perder su casa o que se van a quedar en la calle. Mi primera asamblea no pude hablar. Me dio mucha vergüenza. Vi tanta gente, había mucha, mucha gente que me intimidó a hablar. Llegué con un sentimiento de culpabilidad vergüenza y frustración. Cuando yo conté mi caso, pues me puse a llorar porque estaba desesperada y, y, a, y los ánimos que me dieron todos, no te preocupes, no estás sola, vamos a luchar contigo. Una vez llegas allí, ves que, que tú estás muy mal, pero es que hay gente que está mucho peor. Tienes muchísimo miedo a que... a qué es lo que va a pasar contigo si no se soluciona tu caso. Yo veo que hay mucha gente que no sabe dónde está llegando. Y entonces por eso es muy importante también situar qué es y qué no es la PA, ¿no? Y dónde están, y, y qué pueden esperar y qué no pueden esperar. Es muy importante saber que no somos gestores, no somos abogados, somos un movimiento que entre todos hacemos uno, que no llevamos el caso concreto de nadie en particular, que todo tiene que pasar por la asamblea, te daremos todas las herramientas que tú necesites Todas, absolutamente todas, para eso tenemos la asamblea. Y donde no llegues tú, llegaremos nosotros como para Barcelona. 
es muy importante que esa asamblea previamente haya sido preparada. Que haya un grupo de personas que trabajan para que esa bienvenida funcione, para que haya una dinamización, para que haya eh, pues, eh, quien está controlando el silencio, quien pasa los micros... El que toma turno de palabras, el que lleva el calendario, el que lleva el acta... Y la gente cuando ve algo ordenado, también se relaja. Te organiza la cabeza también, ¿no? Es, eh, puedes ver un objetivo claro, ¿no? Hacia dónde dirigirte, hacia dónde quieres ir, ¿no? O qué quieres cambiar. Para mí es súper importante dejarles muy en claro a las personas, más allá de lo que es la paz, en lo que te tienes que convertir tú al estar en la paz, que es empoderarte. Todos los que estamos ahí lo hemos logrado nosotros. Nadie ha ido por mí a hablar con abogados o con el casero mío. He ido yo a hacer todo eso. Entonces, si yo he podido, todos los demás pueden. Y esto el primer día o los primeros días no te queda muy claro, porque, claro, es que, ostras, tú, si no tengo un abogado, quién, lo, ¿quién me lo va a llevar el caso? No, terminas llevándolo tú misma. Tengo un bebé de 10 meses y, bueno, tenía un abogado de oficio que no hace nada. Tenía un juicio y el hombre no me llamó. Cuesta, cuesta bastante. Las personas sí estamos acostumbradas a ser muy cómodas y a ir a lugares a que nos resuelvan los problemas. La PA no resuelve el problema de nadie. La PA da una información y la persona se empodera y toma su caso y la lucha y acompañamos entre todos esa lucha. ¿no? El jueves fue cuando recibimos contestación del escrito, del abogado, y dije que sigue con el lanzamiento, que no, que no se para. Es que la gente que estamos allí somos gente de, de la calle. Y hemos ido aprendiendo a base de, de esos tropezones, de esa gente que anteriormente estuvo antes que, antes que tú. Y se han ido traspasando esta información, estos conocimientos, esta lucha. Tengo en el espacio el día 19, en el plan de Llobregat, que es el día de la tecnología, que es el día de la tecnología, que es el día de la tecnología. Que no es una vergüenza, que es, le puede pasar a todo el mundo, que hay gente que un día está aquí, y otro día está aquí, que no importa, porque no la vida sí va a estar bien. La vida da subidas y bajadas. Yo sé por lo que está pasando, el terror que está viviendo la persona que está siendo afectada. Yo lo viví, yo viví con miedo, yo tenía pesadillas. Y de pronto te encuentras con una persona que está en el mismo lugar y, 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 y es que la sabes acoger la sabes impulsar y decirle, oye, me mira, yo pasé por lo mismo que tú y vamos a sobrevivir y vas a salir adelante, ¿no? O sea, sí se puede. ¿Alguien de aquí que ya lleva tiempo sabría cómo contestarle qué pasos hacer? Yo creo que puedes hacer dos cosas, ir tú al juzgado y presentarte como que tú estás allí en la vivienda. Yo hablaría con el CIMS y diría, ciérrame el caso. Sin ese asesoramiento colectivo, sin ese todo el mundo puede aportar algo, sin ese yo también sé la respuesta que le van a dar, porque es la pregunta que yo hice también cuando yo llegué y ahora ya la sé, sin nada de todo esto, entonces eh, pues seríamos servicios sociales o seríamos un, un, un servicio de, que es lo más habitual en otros, en, en otros colectivos, ¿no? Ven aquí, yo te cojo tu caso, yo te lo soluciono y, y ya está. Y eso también forma parte del aprendizaje, porque empiezas a dar paso el, al yo, al yoísmo, por el, la solidaridad, el apoyo mutuo. Bueno, buenas tardes, yo soy Yolanda, soy ex afectada, pero... pero bueno, voy a seguir aquí con la paga de Barcelona que me ha devuelto la vida, me ha devuelto las ganas de luchar, me ha devuelto todo. Cuando lo logra, cuando cada uno de los logros de cada una de las personas es empoderamiento para la persona, ¿no? Es que la gente florece, le cambia la cara, le cambia la actitud, le cambia... Vuelven a nacer. Un año después de empezar mi camino, yo ya he resuelto mi caso. Tengo un alquiler social por siete años y sigo estando en la PA por las ganas que tengo de ayudar a otras personas a que no pasen eh, el miedo, la vergüenza y la desesperación de estar sola. 
yo que llevo bastante tiempo en La Paz, La Paz siempre nos hemos ido reinventando, ¿no? O sea, han salido cosas y nosotros les hemos dado la vuelta, ¿no? Pero ¿qué ha pasado? Que lo, la contra, los contrarios, los bancos, los, los políticos también han aprendido y también nos van dando la vuelta. Nuestro objetivo es cambiar las leyes, donde todos nos beneficiemos. Actuar siempre como herramienta, resolver el caso concreto, pero como herramienta de denuncia, de forma que se reconozca el derecho a una vivienda digna. Nadia was saying in the in the video that uh, we all life you have ups and downs and we all could, could be in the same situation. I know right now you may think this is not your case. I hope, truly hope that never happens. But sadly, for a big percentage of you, it will. It will. You will be facing a moment that you cannot pay your rent and you are going to have to struggle. You're going to have to start thinking What do I do? Do I go back to live with my parents? Do I go back to, do I leave this crazy boyfriend that I'm the only reason is this because I paid the rent with him? Or So sometimes we approach housing problems uh, thinking that we don't have anything to do with them because I'm in a comfortable position right now. But uh, it's, not, it's not the case. And even, hopefully, for the ones that uh, never has to face an eviction or never has to really negotiate with a bank or with landlords, Remember, the prices you are paying right now uh, for rental, this is part of this. The prices that you pay for a house or the mortgages, uh, this is the same situation. So even if you don't think it, think you are affected by the housing situation that Belgium, Spain, and many, many other countries in the world are, are facing. So join the fight. Stop, uh, go to your closest uh, civil society movement. There's uh, people here also working and fighting for the right to housing. Do something, because if not, they are, they are certainly doing things for you. So, Okay, so this is uh, our welcome assembly, uh, where, as you see, we do the collective advice. That was, that's key. That uh, differentiates us with, from other models. Okay, uh, where we share our knowledge, we upload all the content. Uh, ah, there's something I forgot. This video is part of this book. Okay, the video you saw before. So we will talk at the end of the of the presentation. But everything I'm saying right now, and this video, and many other things, are in in this book that you can download. And I, if you have any interest or you have you want to find some inspiration, you will find it there in 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 the the book. Okay, so but. So it's not just about meeting, it's also how we do fight back, we, because we need to fight back. And, but we de, do need to do it in a way that uh, uh, we have the legitimacy to. We need to do it in a way that police do not put us in prison. We need to do it in a way that people, when they see us in the street, don't think, what are these crazy people doing? I don't like them, go away. I'm not uh, thinking what you do, have any, any, any reason. So the first thing that we do is need to do is to create this legitimacy. We need to make sure people understand. See, uh, today we are creating legitimacy. When you see an eviction next time, maybe you remind you remember about some. No, you remind this video reminds you of people, and then you start approaching housing or when your father or whoever says, "Oh, I have an awful." Uh, Uh, tenant who is not paying uh, my rent or I want to increase my rent as much as possible because it's my house and I can do whatever what I want with my house and you say well no more this is a human right maybe a house should be protected in some kind so we are building legitimacy so this is key in order to uh, have the respect of society also the media also the the politicians the police so and then also because we are uh, see, we do it in a in a in a non-violent way 
okay? And in a festivity. And uh, we never uh, do it alone. We are always in a collect uh, collective. Uh, and we uh, protect ourselves. We do not expose ourselves unnecessarily. Uh, the objective here is not getting arrested. Um, I spent a, a, a few months in, in New York. We were protesting there, and, and they, at the beginning, okay, so who is going to be arrested today? I said, what do you mean, who is going to be arrested today? Well, yeah, if you want to be in the media, you need to be arrested. So how many, five, ten? Well, that's not the way we, it's not our situation, police. After, it's not like if we will be there, who knows, morally we will be doing that. But uh, the idea here is not getting arrested or it's not exposing yourself. It's just uh, a way to, 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 protect, to collectively protest. So we occupy banks. We do what we call scratches, which is that at uh, the time that our laws are being uh, uh, voted, uh, we go to the politicians. If they don't want to come to our assemblies, we're going to have to go wherever they live or wherever they are meeting. And we go there and we show up and we are, hey, if you don't want to listen to us uh, at your workplace, then we're going to have to try to find you wherever you are. So. We stop evictions. We put ourselves in front of the door. We, the Judiciary Commission comes with the police. Please move your, uh, remove yourself from the door. We say no. And well, you are two, we are 20. Who's going to win? We are going to win. We are 20, you are two. So, okay, so next time they're going to come to with five or six, and then we will be 50 or 100. So, this is also how we do things. We just say no, and that's how we also uh, stop uh, many of the evictions. But we all not, not only do that because, as you were, we were saying, there is no public housing in Spain. So what do we do? We tell the government, build this public housing. We tell the government, ask the banks who has all these empty houses and they don't do it. Then we have the legitimacy to do it because you were bailed out with public money. They have empty houses. These houses are public housing because they were built or, or at least the owner has been paid with public money. So we retake them and we put empty uh, um, vulnerable families to live in empty houses from banks or big landlords. Uh, but this is just uh, the emergency. We need to change uh, the law, okay? And sometimes people, when you wanna change the law, maybe what it comes to your mind, say, okay, I'm gonna join a political party because theoretically that's where the laws are being changed and those are the lawmakers, so I have to join a political party. Well, no. There is another way to build a law, which is uh, from below, is, uh, from us sitting here today, that we could be deciding which is the law we want to pass in terms of housing. And then we go to the politician and say, hey, this is our law, so now go and pass it. So that's what we, we have done. We proposed, we negotiated with them, uh, we also create a strategic litigation, so some specific cases we take them to court to, get, to gain visibility. And it's also true that uh, some pers people of our movement have uh, jumped to the institutions. So they have decided that they want to try the, the, the other alternative, which is uh, uh, being a politician. Well, it's okay, we don't have any problem as long as you are not any longer part of our movement because our movement is open to all kind of uh, political parties and we cannot be uh, uh, identified with uh, none of them. So that was also, I don't know if you know, but the mayor of Barcelona was uh, one of the founders of, of this movement of PA. And so now um, we have the telephone number of the mayor and some uh, people at, uh, at the parliament in Catalonia or the parliament in Madrid. So now we can also call people before we could not call anyone. Uh, but that's it. We, we don't call, that's true. So what we do is we ask for meetings and we make sure that those meetings are known by everyone. And if not, we occupy the city council because we do not care who is in the in office. What we care is about the families and about finding solutions. And it is true that once they jump to the institution, sometimes they kind of forget of how things uh, used to look from the other side. So that's, but it's also a success of the movement, wanted or not wanted, the fact that people now are in positions to also legislate from, from, from their positions. So to change laws, what we did is uh, we collect signatures and we did a, a, a legislative initiative, okay? If you are interested about that, we can, so uh, afterward, we did that in 12, 2013. We had the right-wing party with a majority. 
our law was uh, didn't go far, so we decided to change laws at a, at a state le at a state level. Okay, which is I'm not going to show you about all the things, but you can imagine we are asking for affordable rent, for public housing, for obviously then if you return your house, you cancel the total amount of your debt. We we fight for everybody to have electricity, heat, and water at, at their houses. Okay, uh, that uh, law didn't pass. We are trying again, and next Tuesday, the Parliament of Spain will be voting to take in consideration uh, a law that has been right written by us. It's, it's, it's an amazing law. It's great. So let's see what happens. We are just pending on the socialists. If the socialists decided to decide to to vote in favor, then we have majority, and this law will start its procedure and will start being negotiated. So what are we doing in between? Well, we have doing some, some actions to pressure the, the Socialist Party to make sure they, they try to defend the right to housing in Spain. Uh, we also have done it at a regional level. As I said, if you are interested in, 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 in the specificities of how do we pass laws, then we can talk about uh, after. I think one, one of the, which I wanna mention because I think this is a very uh, law which is in place. Uh, it has been, was suspended, we got it back. Now we are uh, improving it. It was suspended again. So all this, as they were saying, we learn, but they also learn. So we are always trying to, we make two steps, maybe we go back to one, then we make another two. So it's always a, a fight. But this is a very interesting uh, law, which means that in Catalonia, if you are a big tenant, which means that you own more than 15 uh, flats, uh, and you want to evict a family which is vulnerable, which a criteria, uh, that cannot pay the rent or their mortgage, you cannot. You cannot evict this family. You have to uh, do an affordable rent, and the rent is only between 10 and 18% of the incomes of the family. That means that we are having rents of 50, 100 euros. So it's the first time that we, what we are trying to say here is we are changing the, the, the logic behind. The logic behind is, okay, you are our owner. This is your house. We are not going to take it away from you, but as you are making business with a basic need as housing, then you cannot do whatever you want. And then you need to be responsible for the consequences of your activity. If you pollute, uh, you are going to have to pay a tax. Well, here, because of the way you do things, uh, it is increasing the price of housing, you have empty houses, and so on, then you, are have, you have to take responsibility. And the responsibility, you take it by doing this affordable housing. So it's not just the public sector who is the one who has to be always the one defending the, the public market, the public housing market, the profession, the privates also have a responsibility and a role, and they should be taken accountable for. So this is uh, a law that, that 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 has passed. A law that, in fact, it it, it also uh, protects people that has been forced to squat. If I'm occupying a house of a bank uh, because you had it empty for more than two years, then you have not fulfilled the social uh, the social uh, la función, the social the, fun the social function of the house so you build the house is to have people inside if you bank don't have people living in your house you are not fulfilling your social mission then if you are not fulfilling your social mission and somebody enter in your house and occupy it then you are forced to provide a, a an affordable rent and the bank says well Somebody enter, forced the entrance in my house. So they are the ones who commit a uh, uh, felony because, you know, I had my door locked and they open it and they enter in my house and then I'm the one to be forced to, to provide an affordable rent? Yes, because you had it empty for two years. If you will have not have it empty, nobody will have entered. So it's not just about owning, it's what you do what, what, with what you own. And that's also what, the, what this law puts uh, the focus on. We also um, approve a local, a laws at the local level also in Barcelona, precisely. We tried an international level with a European uh, uh, citizens initiative. Uh, we did not succeed in this one. Uh, this I'm gonna jump. So the other part of, of what we do is none of that, of everything that you have seen matters if no one knows that we are doing it. So we make sure uh, that everybody, then we communicate the best way possible. Okay, so we keep communicating no matter what. We have our Twitter, Instagram, social media. 
we got we gained the trust of the media because all of the sudden we are experts. They are asking us, oh, do you know a case of a family because I want to write, oh, you are saying that the numbers of evictions, you are the only one talking about that. So all of the sudden the media also knows and we know more than they do. A media likes to work as little as possible. So if they can find someone and do the work for them, they love it. And if you can provide everything they need uh, for their show, they love it even better. So that's why also they can start giving you visibility because they, 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 you are a reliable, 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 blah, blah. <laughs> that source. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm gonna almost done it. Eh? Uh, so as you were saying, we, can, we do all kind of crazy actions. We try to be, to have fun. The fight without fun is not fight. So we need to make sure everybody gets their themselves entertained. And uh, one of our campaigns, ah, yeah, this, so we organize also specific campaigns depending against banks and against, so one of the campaigns that we organized was against Blackstone. I don't know who was in the presentation of Blackstone. Uh, okay, good. Don't write about that one. <laughs> okay, although if you do, that also is extremely interesting because Blackstone is in your lives more than you think it is. And, and yeah, Blackstone, as you learned that day, is a huge Vulture fan. They came to Spain in 2000 and 2013 and they started buying uh, default mortgages from, from many, many, many of the families that, or from a from a Catalan bank that was bailed out with public money. After bailing out of this bank for public money, they sold their, uh, their more, what they call default mortgages to, to Blackstone. And so a lot of the families that were coming to our assembly, all of a the sudden, they were negotiating with the bank. They theoretically knew the, the person that sold the mortgage to them. All of a the sudden, there is someone which is in New York. And we decided to create this international campaign because as we were saying, these players are international, so we better be coordinated also on international level. So this campaign was to, took place simultaneously in New York, in Tokyo, in London, and in Barcelona. And this is a small video that we... This is a message to Blackstone from Spain from the tenants of your new houses. Houses that used to be our homes. Maybe you don't know us. But you will. Yes, you will. We are the bar. La plataforma afectada por la hipoteca. The Spanish platform against evictions. And we fight for the right to housing. The Spanish Government and the rescued Spanish banks are selling our houses to you with huge, huge discounts. Discounts that were denied to us. And now you are rising the prices, putting all of us in risk of eviction. Maybe you think you are untouchable, hiding in your nice building in Manhattan. But you are not. You don't know what we are capable of. This is what we do to people like you. And this is what you do to people like us. <laughs> you listen carefully, Blackstone. We will fight for our homes. For our rights. For our dignity. For our sons and daughters. Eh? Grandchildren. We will fight against your economic interests. Against everything you represent. We will make sure that everybody knows who you are and what you do. Get ready. We are. Ready. Okay, so this was part of a, of a campaign that uh, we keep fighting against these people, but... Uh, we do it in a in a coordinated and international way. So as I was saying, uh, please go to affectadospolahipoteca.com. You will find uh, this book where you can download it if you think you there's some obviously um, everything that we have learned in the 13 years. Also the bad things, all the problems because I have only explained the nice uh, fun part about PA. 
there's also like any movement, any as long as as soon as you get two people together, we start having problems. Where like anywhere else, we do have problems, and but we we solve them and we have solved them until now. And but we do not refuse to talk about them, which as I think it's it's also. Uh, good because you have to be ready uh, to be able to face uh, some problems and we also have this in english in our website which is a little bit of also how we organize which is that's what was something that we handle people when they come to our assembly uh, to so they learn a little bit about about pa and how to organize and what are the next steps they're going to be facing okay and i think i'm going to leave it here uh, because I think somebody is starting to fall asleep. Uh, uh, so we can uh, have some questions, and hopefully we gain some interest on, and we explain things and you feel more interested, interesting that we have not, uh, or I have not explained. So if you have any question. Oh, that's, that's not a question, but I take it, thank you. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, please, when asking questions, keep on your mask. Um, yeah. Thank you. Uh, hey, uh, many thanks, uh, Santi. Very interesting. Uh, I think my question is more related to, uh, uh, you know, what can we achieve in changing the law? Uh, because I think, uh, yeah, that's one strategy of uh, trying to achieve uh, law changes. But... Uh, uh, I've heard of people in Catalonia, for instance, that the emergency law in Catalonia, uh, in many cases, has been actually very difficult to, uh, to implement, to apply, because there wasn't actually any housing to be provided to people that were uh, being evicted, or that, you know, because there's this compulsory kind of like a thing of uh, rehousing people that are being evicted, but there's no housing to go cover them. So, so I guess it's more of like a broader question of, uh, uh, in the PA, if you also see really changing the law as like the ultimate objective or more as a means of uh, achieving something and how do you see also this thing of uh, like uh, getting laws implemented that are great but are in the end of the day at the end of the day are not uh, applied or applicable or are made inapplicable by the government by the uh, banks or, or by, uh, mm -hmm. by in general uh, yeah, i mean you know, yeah you. no that's one of the things that we have learned uh, at the beginning we thought okay we pass a law and that's it we, we have a law no um, uh, do, people, do governments do not mm, follow their laws? Do they not uh, apply their own laws? It seems they don't. You cannot break the law, but they can easily break the law. And, and, and it seems like a, like a fucking joke, but it's not. So really, you come to the guy and not to the politician, there is a law here. You need to do that. The law obliges you to do that. So come on, do it. And they don't. And they don't do it. Uh, so it's true. So there is some laws that... Uh, you do not only have to think about the law, you need to see, think how this law is going to be applied, uh, and you have to make sure your campaign, your pressure keeps until this law is really implemented. Hopefully when it's really implemented that the system has accepted and understand that that is really uh, something automatic, then it happens. Uh, with the law, Catalan, you were saying precisely what we were doing is housing it takes four, six years to build. So we don't have six years for all those evictions. So what do we do? Uh, thinking about that, we say, okay, let's, and we have all these empty houses from the banks and we have the banks and we have the big ten. So let's make them responsible for it. So our law is not the, it is being implemented. So it, it is a, a big part of it is being implemented. Another one is taking us a little bit longer, uh, but uh, it is being implemented because uh, the landlords cannot uh, evict if they have a vulnerable family. So it's not like they have to find a place to put this family. It's you, the big corporation, who has to provide this affordable housing. And we have signed thousands of those. So the problem is that now we, we these contracts were for three years. Now we are changing uh, right now the law again in Catalonia to make them of life for them to renew the contract. Uh, we are also forcing the administration because the law said, okay, if you do not comply with this and you do not make uh, the affordable rent and the judge 
decides to even that I know there is a law, I'm going to decide not to apply it, which is also happens. Judges do not also uh, follow the law or apply the law because they interpret it. They, I'm not so sure, it says here. I'm, I'm a right-wing guy. I'm against uh, all these uh, crazy people, so I'm not understanding the law the same way you do, so I'm not going to apply it. Uh, but even in those cases, the administration has the capacity to fee the 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 owner, the landlord, which with ninety thousand euros for each rent and they do not apply. And this is the part they're not doing. As soon as the the administration and why they do not do it? Because when they go to oh it's a very long process, administrative process, you know, I don't know how long it will take me. And we say we do not care. So now our campaign is gonna pressure the city councils, uh, pressure the Council of Barcelona, make sure that no matter what, as soon as somebody doesn't apply with the law, meet the law, then they get their fee automatically, and as soon as they start receiving 90,000 uh, euros for each uh, uh, rent they do not do, then they will start. So, yes, you need to fight uh, a little bit longer than just getting the law, but it is not that the law, uh, this particular law, uh, it is not well thought. I'm sure it can be better uh, applied. That's one of the things you end up learning. But it, it is that the administration ha is not refusing some of it not to apply it. And that needs a little bit more fight. No excuse. All right. Next question. Hello. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I have also a question concerning um, the laws. Um, you try to, to change uh, the law in um, different levels, in the state level, in the city level, but also in the EU uh, level. But uh, from, from what I understood, it seems that it was more easier to do that in the regional level. No, the, the difficulty is pretty much the same at all, uh, at all three levels. It's just your capacity so, to influence the, the government at that, at that moment. So as we were saying, politicians, governments, they do not care about uh, what we need. They just care about making sure they make it to the next uh, mandate. In this sense, as more, uh, if they think these people are making me lose votes, then I'm going to start have to listen more to what they are saying. And, and that's uh, if you have a very strong capacity to influence local government because you are really mobilizing in Brussels and then uh, you can really be whatever they are, reminding them that this is not, uh, you know, there are evictions here or the price of, and you do that repeatedly, then whatever the city council will say, okay, let's start looking to this because they are making my life uh, miserable. If you are capable of doing that at a uh, state level, then the same as the state level or a, or a national level. So the difficulty is very similar because at the end of the way you, you need majorities, you need to convince uh, political parties that normally are not so much in favor of what you are uh, defending. So the, the, and the, the difficulty with the European law, it, as you know, you may change something at a European level, but then they need to go to the local go to the governments, and but obviously you can also sometimes, depending on as as I was showing you before, thanks to the European Union or to the European Justice of Court, we got our uh, how mortgage law a little bit better than it is right now. Because if it would have been because of the Spanish judiciary system, we will still have a very 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 uh, law that uh, doesn't protect uh, consumers. So it's not uh, the the level is is the same. There was a question in the back. <laughs> okay. Hi. Um, well, first, thank you for your presentation. I think that uh, international media always shows uh, the bad side of things. So we see like all these evictions in Barcelona happening, but we don't see like good things happening. Um, so I think this is, this was very interesting. But I wanted to ask about the affordable prices of these um, like places that 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 Ba finds, mm -hmm. uh, they are affordable based on what? <laughs> like, are are they based on the uh, tenants' income or are they based on the minimum wage of the country? Because I know that minimum wage is about a uh, thousand or uh, mm -hmm. eleven hundred euros, but you will always have people earning a lot less than that. Mm -hmm. So. No, so the the prices of the rents that we have put in our law, this this law is the one we were saying before and is in place, those are between 10 and 18% of your income, of the family's income, okay? Uh, but this is like a social uh, rent. 
above that, you will, you will be having the affordable rent, which is should not be more than 30% of your of, of the family incomes. So, but obviously for vulnerable families that are only making 400 euros out of a uh, public aid, you're not going to take 30% out of it because they already don't have enough with what they have. But you cannot have it for free either, okay? So uh, our, our average uh, and the law, again, which is in place in Catalonia, and that's the same one that we are trying to export to the rest of Spain, is between 10 and 18, and because of uh, related with uh, family income family, not only person, everybody that is living in the in the same household. Hey, I have a question which is more about uh, building a durable long-term movement. Um, you mentioned that you started the PAN in uh, 2008. And Nine. now uh, we're 13 years uh, further. Could you tell us a bit on how you managed to keep this movement alive over such a long time? Mm -hmm. Good question. And <clears throat> well, first, because of the the problem ex continues existing. So if the problem will have been solved, the the movement will have disappeared. So that's the bad, the bad, uh, the bad part. The good part is that uh, because there's a, a big part of the people that comes to PA that once they get their problems solved, they leave. But there's also a big part of the people that comes to PA that they have find uh, they have found a place where they can not only fight for their for their housing problem. Uh, but as you also saw in the video, they also have become part of a of a family, of a support group, of a place that they are helping them not only related with housing. You have to think that if you have a housing problem, for sure, you also have a health problem because stress, anxiety, depression, uh, that generates uh, heart problems. So you also, housing is just one of them. If you are a student, you are going to have problems at school because obviously if you are living in a hotel room or you are living in the uh, sofa of your grandfather's, uh, that's not a place for a kid to grow. So you will have, in addition to your your studies, you will be having problems at school. Nobody wants to say, I'm evicted. Uh, that's, I'm... So you have many problems uh, around housing that... Um, our health also, no? as, as, as I was saying. So PAC will continue. So you keep needing a place to, to, to still be in part. That's one. The second thing is that we do celebrate uh, every small victory that we make. It's key to celebrate. It's key because at the end of the day, uh, okay, yeah, we stop an eviction. And this may last uh, two months. We will have another eviction in the same house. And then in four more months. So this is not the solution. But we have a stop an eviction. And for this family, this is huge. And for them, they're going to have a few more months or, or, or weeks. Or maybe we end up getting them, no, or because of their fight, uh, they end up getting a social rent. So those are celebrations that we need to to make. So at PA, we are celebrating a lot. We celebrate anniversaries. We celebrate every time we stop an eviction. We celebrate every time we get a social rent. We celebrate every time we pass a law. So we celebrate. That's also uh, something that um, people like to celebrate. So that's why they... No, that gives you fuel to keep fighting and you realize that, okay, yeah, my long term, uh, I have an objective which is changing the law, but I'm in the meantime, I have very small uh, milestones that I am, I'm also achieving. So that's also part of the of the reason. Uh, the second is because you keep having new people arriving constantly, and 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 because of the problem is not. So there are many, and those these are a, a few. But it clearly, it's not uh, it's not easy. There's a point when, as as we were saying, we, we had a lot of people that left for the institutions, and at that time, uh, not only one person, a lot of people left. And people then, at, at that time, they were having quite a very uh, intensive uh, activity in the movement. But hey, another people appear, uh, things uh, change. And so even if that's also the good part of being an, an horizontal movement. So if people change, leave, somebody else will, will take over. And that's also you need to take care of it and you need to foster. And it's not uh, as easy, but those, for me, are some of the reasons 
that we're still, and there's no money, so there's no that big, huge fights, so. Okay, maybe a last final question of the audience oh. here. Uh, there are two questions. <laughs> I don't know who was first. <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, then I will only choose one. Um, have you, <laughs> because I had two in my head. Uh, have you ever uh, We can dealt continue it afterwards, say if you want. Yeah, sure. Uh, have you ever dealt with refugees uh, in your organization and how was this experience mm -hmm. for you? Yeah, yeah. Um, our major says that Barcelona is a welcome city. And Spain, uh, with the new government, we also accepted uh, a couple of votes that arrived to to Barcelona, Valencia, promoting that. Of course, here we treat people uh, fairly. If you are, if you don't have papers in, I don't know if you read. Hopefully not. Um, last week, four people died in a in a bank uh, office. They were squatting there. Two of them were minors, one three months old, and the other two years. And social services were um, attending them. Uh, they were giving them help with the, for to pay for their food, and no housing. There is, you know, my catalog. I don't have anything for you related to housing because, again, housing. I don't know why it's not in the equation of something you may need. So refugees. Uh, they don't have, uh, there's a, a certain amount of months and they can stay. Afterwards, they become just as another uh, uh, irregular immigrant in the city. They have absolutely no right for any housing. Uh, they have the right to go to emergencies and, and medical. They can also uh, put their kids to school. But uh, from a housing point of view, they don't have. So what we do as uh, one of the things we have also many issues that we are not experts on and we do not pretend to be. And, and so we, for example, everything that has to do related with papers, where well, we, we tell them where to go to another organization. Uh, we have a lot of domestic violence, but so it needs a very specific attention and, and in a specific way. So we do support, we do, because again, they come with problem, housing problems. Uh, but we are not the experts to deal with some situations, and so we relate, uh, we derivate them to a, a movement. Also, I mean, in this, the city council has a very good uh, structure for for women that have been uh, that have been, that have been abused. So we refer them to those social services, and and we make sure the family keeps coming. So in those very specific situations, we where we are not experts on that, uh, but there is also a housing situation. We deal with the housing situation, but with the rest, we try to to defer them to more more specialized uh, organizations. There's one last question uh, of the online audience, so I propose you ask your other questions maybe uh, after uh, afterwards. It's a long question, that's why I propose ah. <laughs> to make this the last question. So thank you, this was a great presentation, very moving. Um, so the question is, how has this relationship changed with the municipality since Ada Colau became the major? And what does this tell you uh, of the role of the mayor? How much power do they have to change the housing situation? Or are even the people we put in a municipality not really in charge anymore? Is it completely taken over by corporates uh, like Blackstone? So how much power do they have over the municipality? Where these questions come from? At the online audience. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, so the first one is how the relation has changed. Um, well, um, no, obviously it has changed. Uh, the, the mayor of Barcelona was someone that was stopping evictions a, a few years ago, and so we were colleagues stopping evictions, or we were colleagues uh, uh, occupying me and another and many other colleagues. So obviously that is not happening any longer. And and but the fact is more than more than the relation in itself. The relation with the movement uh, clearly what we have done is uh, 
make clear to everyone that we don't have anything to do to be with them, okay? Not, not with them in specific, with no one, not political parties, not because you came from our movement means that we are gonna support, we are not gonna uh, protest uh, with, uh, so, um, Four people died just uh, a week ago in, in my city, uh, and social services were taking care of them. So how come the city did not put this family uh, in a place to live? So there is no way that if I belong to PA, I cannot just be mm, protesting and I just been denouncing the situation. So we as a movement have the obligation to keep pressuring governments, no matter who they are, how friends or not friends, or how well or not well you know that people. So in this sense, we as a movement, I think we have done that very well, very clear. Uh, we have occupied several times the, the city council and, and, and it has to be that way. So we don't care who they are, but if they don't do what we think they need to be doing, we are gonna for sure make, make sure people knows about it. Uh, the capacity you have to change things from a local uh, municipality, you do have uh, options, of course, and you do you have the capacity, but it is also true that it's not only your responsibility in terms of housing, it's a local level, a state level, so there are laws that they cannot change the rental law in order to approve a, a, a rental regulation. They can't. So I cannot be asking her, or we cannot be as a asking the city council, ah, oh, we want you to change the law, the national, that, that's not your, but we can ask you, the people that are being evicted, please don't send them to, to pensions or to hostels and put them in a, in a, in a house. And that's her responsibility and, and her team. And that they are not meeting that obligation. They are doing way more than they were doing the other ones, yes. They are doing, uh, they have solved the problem, no. Um, so is this housing in the hands of Blackstone and a big corporations uh, in Spain? Uh, they have a piece of the cake, they're getting bigger. They don't have yet as, as in, in other countries. I think in Germany, it is way more concentrated than, than in Spain. In Spain, we're still having as many small uh, owners, but there's many things that can be done in order to make sure that, that the house is, in, is a human uh, uh, right in Spain. And they have a responsibility and they have, take, uh, taken, they have to take uh, responsibility for. I just hear that there's still room for one question. Ah, you there still we go. feel like answering questions? Oh so yeah, I don't I know if they feel like uh, it's Friday night. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what you do in, at, in Friday here. But. Hi, uh, thank you for, your, uh, for talking to us. Um, you made this uh, collective advice uh, format. You made it sound so simple as it just like is the simplest <laughs> solution. But I can imagine that you need like a good idea to come up with it or at least like some professional background so I was wondering where that is rooted in and also um, whether like some of your members like how much professional knowledge they bring into the work uh, yeah mm -hmm. no great question um, none 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 no one uh, so we have a lawyer Yes, we do have a lawyer, uh, which is one more that uh, is not the one answering the questions. And sometimes, well, a lot of times now he uh, has a baby and he's not any longer coming. So it's, um, you do not need it. Um, it is way easier that, that, that it may look from at the start. You, only, um, you need Lily, which is the, fair, the lady that talked at the beginning having a warm welcome at somebody else crosses the door. Uh, so just that is telling you, hello, you are here, welcome. This is how it's gonna work, don't worry, sit here. And that at least tells you that you are in the right place. Then you need to explain people what you do, how you are. So what I was, uh, Noelia was saying, you need, people need to understand where they have arrived. So this is not social services. And, and we have lost people and because we clearly said, we are not gonna do that for you. So if you wanna do it yourself, do it. If you don't wanna do it yourself, that's, that's, that's your decision. Um, so sometimes, um, and, and, and there are some more people more than others, uh, well, you are tough with, uh, because uh, if you are not, if they told you you need to go to social services, they need to, you know, you need to download the document and bring it to the court. You need to uh, talk to your landlord and present this document. Have you done it? No, so what, what do you want us to do? Nothing? Well, 
So uh, sometimes so people get also upset because you need to also at the same time that you are warm and you have to be caring and you have to make sure. Well, caring also means sometimes telling you that the way you are doing things, they're not going to take you to the right place. So, but at the end, it's also controlling the making sure as most people as possible as participate. We could do a, a collective, uh, collective advice right now easily, uh, starting uh, asking someone, uh, I don't know, does anyone knows where to go tonight, and someone else will start asking, saying, no, oh, I go here, and somebody will start, no, I went to this place and I didn't like it, and no, oh, well, and you just need someone that passes the microphone and to the others, and, and, and basically, that's it. And so I will clearly uh, watch the video again, or it is here also, but uh, don't fear the collective advice. It's, it's the best, try it. You will see it is natural, people also, have the need to share their knowledge. Once they have it, they also want to feel part of it. So it's not gonna gonna keep it. Sometimes it's true. You need to force. You need to make sure that the ones that are always answering not or not answer all the time. So because sometimes it's easier. Sometimes it's quicker. Sometimes the answer someone has given is wrong. And what do you do now? Because now this person has decided to talk for the first time, and the the what the, he or she has said is not the correct thing. Well, it doesn't happen anything. Well, I'm going to complement what uh, this person has told you. Mira, look, this is uh, another idea, maybe, and somewhere else. No, no, yeah, this is better. Well, so it is uh, ways to deal with the group, but we have not been learned, teach. It is true that there's some people that do the dynamization that we call, and these people, as you do it more often, you get more experience. Some of them, because they have liked it, they have, they have afterwards start working in that or making a specific studies. But it's not because they came first and mm, with that knowledge. So you can do collective advice even in a topic so uh, legally or uh, in with uh, common people. And it's, it's true also that sometimes you need to look to the law or you need to ask someone. You don't answer what you do not know. Uh, maybe we do not know as a group the answer. Don't worry, next week we will look up to uh, somebody who can look for this thing. Next, okay, next week you explain us exactly what uh, how that works. So it's also not trying to pretend to be what you are not, not trying to pretend to know what you don't know but the group and have faith and trust in the group because the group uh, as a group is knows a lot so is is the expert i think we have all the necessary information to start a platform in brussels now ah uh, well <laughs> if uh, if you do we will be happy to skype or whatever and <laughs> and there's there's a housing organization i think is part of the european housing alliance coalition which is based in in brussels so uh, yeah, yeah, there are, there are things happening in your city, so if you feel that this is a topic that you want to engage with, if you want, I'm sure you have the place to go, so do it. Thank you. Thanks Thank a you. lot for the very interesting, compelling um, presentation. Um, it was also I have one question now, sorry. Ah, yes. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. <laughs> so, who has decided what is the paper going to be about? <laughs> who has decided to write about PA? Oh, not about power, about it, yeah. We already on, have one I'm person. Not Only one? Okay, <laughs> thank you. The second one. Thank you. Two, three, yes. uh, there we go. <laughs> Four, five, that's it. Okay, <laughs> well, anyway, if you need any more information, you can find it in our... We, we will our, let you know afterwards. <laughs> uh, correct. Let's see how many of those really... <laughs> okay, thank you very much for having us uh, been here. Mm -hmm.